day one of mini extravaganza. Time to paint. Ba -ba -bum -bum. Hello and welcome to day one of mini extravaganza, our three day event online, hanging out, painting, and talking to all kinds of cool stuff like development and uh, roadmaps and all the fun stuff. If you're just tuning in, you missed the Shatterpoint roadmap uh, j that just happened. Um, so uh, wait for that for a uh, video on demand. Go back and check that out in case you missed it. But right now, from that roadmap, from that roadmap, um, we're going to be painting up our um, no disintegration squad pack. Um, that comes with um, Boba Fett, Dangar, Bosk, and IG88. IG88. And um, I think I'm going to start with Dangar, my man, Dangar, because um, he's so super cool. And we can talk about um, the sculpting, we can talk about the design while I paint, and you can ask me paint questions and all that fun stuff. So let's get going. Kick it over here to the mini cam. One summer in the house running the stream for me today. And we're just going to start on this wonderful, wonderful Dengar. He's got grenades, he's got head wraps. And he either has either the most criminal um, monkey lizard ever known, or he's caught a lunch. I'm not sure which one it is somewhere. Oh, he caught lunch. He, oh, definitely lunch. He caught a lunch. That's that's what the monkey lizard. He was like, he's like, he's out on him. He's out getting paid to do a job, capturing somebody, bringing them in. Um, for some creds and he just happened across this monkey lizard and Dangar being Dangar is just like you know what that looks like a snack we need a peek at Bosk my favorite criminal reptile yeah we'll bring Bosk up in a moment um, as well We'll, go, we'll just switch back and forth and we can talk about um, the different miniatures and sort of the different ideas and um, all that kind of stuff and like what, what, what we were designing, what we were thinking about um, from a sculpting and miniature standpoint. So if you're interested in that stuff, which I know you are, because you're a miniature hobbyist and you're like, hey, I need to know about these miniatures. What are those weird gear things he's holding? Uh, those are um, uh, manacles. Not to be confused with monocles. Um, but yeah, they're like little, he's got the little, some manacle handcuffs, right? I'm gonna mix up like a light sort of khaki color here real quick. Uh, Bosk is one of my favorite bounty hunters. I'm looking forward to seeing his cards. Yeah, I think all these cards are pretty interesting and fun. I really like these. Uh, how long it took to get Dangar to look this cool? Um, so let's let's see here. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how much you think you know about characters um, when you start really working on them and having to design a miniature and rules you really start to deep dive and find some interesting stuff um, and you know if you're just if you're casual star wars you remember dangar from you know the bridge of the imperial star destroyer when they get hired and it's just like that's just the dude and he's wearing some armor and he's a bounty hunter um, and you start learning about him with his little different grenades and you know um, he's got these scars and sores on his head and face um, canonically smelly refresh 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 that window if you're not seeing anything Um, and we really wanted just a cool, some cool swagger 
on Dengar. Um, I believe Tony Konachek, our boy Tony, um, did the uh, first draft poses on uh, Dengar, coming up with a bunch of diff different ideas, right? We, we always iterate, um, just like in development, right? It's, it's, like, it's like iterations. It's not just this is what happens. Um, you, you draw, when you're doing poses, you kind of, we usually have like a little discussion of sort of the, the character, sort of like what the vibe is we want to capture. Um, and then, you know, we sort of assign out to the different people who's going to paint or who's going to draw what. Uh, Tony came up with this idea, the little uh, leg up gun across his shoulder he's holding the he's holding the shackles uh the cuffs and and um we thought it was fun to put the little monkey lizard in there because it was just sort of a, a cute like i don't want to say cute because nothing about dango is cute right um i mean i think he's cute i think he's adorable um but we went that little monkey lizard that you know or something that had been captured for whatever reason, right? It's like, you know, why did why did why did he capture this monkey lizard? Like I said, is it is this monkey lizard a notorious scoundrel? Wanted in three sectors. Or is it just Dengar's lunch for today? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Has there been a character that's been released you feel that you got it on the first try? Yeah, we get it on the first try sometimes. We've definitely had a couple first, like, like, um, you sort of have a character and you, you sort of just know what the goal is and you sit down with the drawing pad or the, or, you know, sometimes I even, a couple of us still do it like on, you know, pen and paper sometimes and then we have to like translate it over to digital. And, um, and um, you, you just sort of catch that, that um, lightning in a bottle basically, right? It's just like, yes, that, that's exactly what I wanted. Um, and then there's always like tweaking that happens after you draw the pose, right? Because um, we draw the pose, and then um, I always like reaching out to Marco and the engineering team, Evan, Kevin, um, Alex, and all, all those cats, and, and being like, so what, what is, what, what, is there any problems here? You know, what do you think of this? Engineering-wise, and they take a look at it. And they'll give feedback. Um, usually, usually we don't have too much feedback. And but once you get it in sculpt, you have to you have to like print it out, kind of get a feel for what's going on, right? Um, you know, and before you finalize it, because you really want to see it in three dimensions. Um, you want to see that, um, it, no matter how good a sculptor is, right? You want to see what is on the monitor digitally translates to that three-dimensional space. So we like getting, um, you know, some prototypes, and then we take a look at it, and then sometimes you have to make a few adjustments. Um, sometimes you don't. I, I don't remember a lot of adjustment, adjustments. On this one, uh, it was more like minor details. Uh, oh, I on radio, what's up? Uh, Daz, love your work. I'm curious if you come up with your paint schemes on the fly during the stream, or do you do a test run like, <laughs> like Bob Ross? I do no test runs. <laughs> um, but Summer knows. Like most of the time, I'm just like I'm just like walking in, and I'm like I have no idea what's I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, I'm just as surprised as you are at the end of the day. <laughs> um, um, when I'm when I'm painting at home, even uh, for my you know like um, 
I, I get a little bit like that. I like seeing where things run. I like th I like seeing kind of where things go. And, um, you know, I might have like where, you know, I might have like a base philosophy of where I would like to go with the with a paint job or on a miniature, right? Like I'm like, well, I want the armor to be bronze and, um, you know, or, you know, Boba Fett, I might be like, you know, at home, I might be like, I know I want the green armor, but sometimes on stream, it's just, uh, it's much more, um, who knows? I might paint Boba Fett today in the uh, prototype Boba Fett color scheme, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, which I'm sure you do. Like prototype Boba Fett is very cool. Who knows what I'll do? Um, but even at home, like I, I mean, um, if I'm painting like my clones for Legion or Shatterpoint, I know kind of, you know, I have my basic rules for making my army, right? But even then, I might be making a lot of like little decisions on the fly to sort of uh, adjust and play and toy around with ideas as they just come to me. Um, but many times on streams, I, I, I'm coming in here just to have fun and paint some miniatures and hang out and talk about philosophical notions of um, existential painting. And we just kind of see where it goes from there, right? What's that? What's that? They could do a pre-paint to get their timings pro. Oh, I do none of that. Yeah, I'm a monster. Um, sometimes I paint a full miniature in an hour on a, on a on a normal stream. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I don't quite get there, but that's okay. I've been doing this long enough and, uh, you know, just even professionally, right? Like I can pretty much look at a miniature and let you know how long it's going to take me depending on the level you want it painted at. Plus one for prototype Boba. All right. So what we've done, let's talk about this. Um, I've used the uh, new Adepticon um, set of paints from Pro Acryl, this lovely bright shadow flesh and um, red oxide. And then I used um, signature series, my boy Ben Comets, advanced flesh tone. Um, and I got my basics of my flesh on there. Um, I'll need a little green in this in a little bit. Um, but I want I want to I want to move through a couple of these miniatures, so we're gonna let stuff dry, and then for his little head wraps, we used um, some khaki and a little light umber, mix that together, and then we threw a little bit of Payne's gray in there and for the shadows, and we're just gonna we're just gonna build that up. Life for day special boba, let's do boss. Let's, let's do boss for a little bit. Look at this lizard! This one was one, I think we had like, I think, uh, I feel like Preston, uh, if I remember right, did the posing on boss. Was gonna use a little green and some wash medium. We're gonna to start toning his scales. Um, I think he only had like, I think he only drew like four. And this was one of those ones where, um, you know, you have all these wonderful options. Um, any one of them could have worked. Any one of them would have looked good. Um, but 
this one was a sort of the standout winner, right? And, um, you know, the team looked at it and was like, look at him yell with his little lizard mouth. And it was super fun um, and exciting and a great little capture of that Trandoshan rage. And it just, it just, it just, it just read really well. Um, and we thought it was going to translate to Mentor very well. Um, yeah, he's stepping on a bow caster. Um, and then the impeccable Dave Kid um, sculpted all four of these wonderful bounty hunters and just knocked it out of the park. Um, just took all the poses that were drawn and just really, um, as, as he normally does, he kind of, he kind of, he does what the pose is drawn, but there's always that little bit of Dave kid in there and it makes them even more special and unique and, um, just really brings them to life. So, um, wonderful concept. Uh, pose by Preston, wonderful sculpt by One Dave Kid, um, and then the studio one, um, which I believe everybody's seen in the last panel, was painted by One Brendan Roy, which I'm sure you've heard his name many times. Um, he does he does a lot of painting for us, like a lot, a lot. Uh, when you talk about sculpting, I talk about digital renders, physical sculpts, or a mix. Um, we do, um, our sculpts are digital sculpts. Um, we work in hard plastic. So way, way back in the day, you took a, you took a physical sculpt and you had to use like a big three up machine and to get them into hard plastic. It's much easier now. Um, you take a digital sculpt and you have to engineer it. Um, which is a very long, complex process that requires a lot of skill and a lot of knowledge. Um, fortunately, we have a very great team of people who are always pushing their skills and understanding and knowledge of engineering to the limits. Um, so they're digital sculpts and they get turned into uh, little files and then we and then we get them turned into steel molds. The molds are made out of steel. It's two big old plates of steel that come together. Um, so if you get this, if you get one of us talking about about the engineering, you're gonna hear words like um, drafting and draft angles and undercuts and stuff like that. And these are all these are all the things that make the decision for the miniature and how it's cut. Um, they're super important because. Uh, the steel molds have zero tolerance. It's like two big steel molds come together like this and inside is a little negative cavity Just going around him when obviously you can't do that because his fingers would get in the way So that's why you have to cut the hand off, right? That's why you have to cut the bow caster off, right? It just get in the way um, This would get in the way right? if it's coming through like that This would just be solid space. So you have to cut that off and turn it all these kind of wonderful ideas um, but anything that's like uh, be cause an undercut or a drafting the plastic would get stuck on the side and it would rip rip the plastic apart uh, when the molds came apart. Um, so that's why things get cut the way they are. Uh, what color should we do his, I know he's typically got an orange uh, jumpsuit. Should we do the orange jumpsuit on this fella? I wanna paint some of the chest bits real quick while everybody considers their vote. Consider it very carefully. I do like this part being white. This uh, Russian astronaut. Bit. Yellow, 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 blue. I actually love painting yellow. Um, I love painting white.
Yeah, they found they just that's why I love yeah yeah all classic Star Wars is such a great like what kind of parts we got laying around the uh, the studio? Oh, put that on there. Glue that. Glue that on there. Let's take some transparent yellow. Mm -hmm. This is just the um, brown. He's just a janitor trying to make his way through the galaxy. Bosk suit is actually a leftover costume from Doctor Who. That's a fun bit of information. I do know like these little, um, like the X-wing uh, vest are like um, Russian astronaut cooling vest. We're gonna put a little orange in our yellow, or we didn't we didn't mix them together yet, but. Boom, 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 boom. We're just gonna use a little orange and yellow mix off to the side. Use some of this glaze wash medium. I do, I do love painting yellow and white. I think why I do is, um, is, is not, I'm a ch I am a challenge-based creature. Like, let's let's be real. Um, if you ever meet me and spend time with me, I'm I'm very much a challenge-based creature. Um, but I think a lot of it comes down to um, the uniqueness you can get out of the colors. Um, I love shading yellows with like a turquoise or a brown. Um, you know, all these kind of things. Um, I love bringing, I love painting whites because there's just, there's no right way to do it and you don't actually use white. I think that's where most people's hang, hang ups are is they go to paint white and they just grab, you know, effectively titanium white and just go for it. Um, and that's really not, how you want to do that. Um, we've gone over it multiple times on streams. So if you're curious how I approach white, you should go check that out. Um, you know, it's really more about painting grays. Yeah, Sarasso, uh, Sarasso also joined us at Adepticon this year uh, and did a, a uh, clone white clone armor class um, which I sat in on um, which was fun and he went over like you know kind of like kind of like we do here um, he went over like several different approaches right there's not one approach there's multiple approaches to painting white you know using blues using browns uh, using grays um, using cool, uh, how to use cool tones and warm tones in your whites, but never actually using white to the very, very, very end. Um, so it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. I love that challenge, and I love that just a philosophical like sort of approach to them. Um, which is funny because I'm probably going to be painting some stormtroopers this week, and I don't. Think they're going to be white i want to do some test schemes for some things um actually on stream so we'll see where they go um a little, little teaser right there a little teaser dropped a little teaser yeah it's not dave oh it's in house. They're in house. I'm a fool. And who did IG? I think that was Alex. You you know what? You're right. My bad. See, this is what happens when you when you're live and you're in the zone. You 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 know something, but your your brain is your, your brain gets in the weird place. 
Can you scroll up? There's a really interesting. Yeah, black is defined by highlights and uh, white by its shadows. Uh, oh, there you go. What are some tips you can give to improve or to give someone to try and improve their painting? Great question. Uh, my only tip, not my only tip, my best tip is paint. Learn to um, love failing. Um, there's there's that famous there's that famous line. There's that famous line. I failed more times than you've tried. Um, and that's a great philosophy for anything you want to do in life, right? You got to get in there and you got to fail a couple times. Uh, you got to be willing to ask yourself, um, you know, if you try something and it didn't work, ask yourself why it didn't work and then try to, um, and then how do you mitigate that? How do you, how do you adjust for that, that fail? How do you take that fail and turn it into a win? Uh, learn to take criticism. Um, you know, I think criticism is super important. Um, it's how we grow, right? Um, it's funny because I also have a rule never take criticism, never take advice from somebody you wouldn't take criticism or never take criticism from somebody you wouldn't take advice from. Um, because, um, you know, somebody might be coming from a, a different place with their criticism or a place of um, uh, lack of knowledge. And so the criticism can fall apart and you won't know how to integrate it. So finding people that you can get criticism from that definitely show a level of the, the level that you're wanting to reach to. Um, but definitely just paint. If you want to be better at something, you got to do it, right? If you want to learn how to ride a bike, you ride a bike and you fall over, right? There you go. Radio Santi. Sucking at something is the first step of being sort of okay at something. Edison tried and failed a hundred times to make a light bulb, right? Yeah. Steal the design true. But the philosophy, we're talking about the philosophy. Um, there's, there's lots of things there that you just kind of got to do and you got to, you got to, you got to boff it. I always say you got to boff it or bosk it. I'm um, using watercolor brushes. So just your typical, um, sable, um, watercolor brushes. Just darken up his, some of these lines. I always talk about the plateau as well. Um, people, people are like, ah, I feel like I plateaued. I feel like I plateaued. I'm like, learn to love the plateau because the plateau means ask yourself, why are you plateauing? Ask yourself, um, what has caused me to be on this point in the plateau, right? Start analyzing that a little bit. And then you can maybe, hopefully, the goal is you realize why you're plateauing and then you can have that breakthrough, right? The plateau just means you're on the edge of learning something, right? But you have to start looking at the why or what. Where do I fall in the spectrum of caring about brushes? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't maintain my brushes at all. Never have. Um, I'm sort of, I always try. I always have that little bit of me. It's just like, this time I'm going to try to take care of this brush. And then I just don't. I'm, I'm sort of a monster in that way. We're adding a little blue to our greens and browns for another shade on the flesh. I think that needs a little. Gorgeous little color that is. Oh, 
Fun fact, Shix never stole my brushes. He was just using his own brushes he didn't realize. I take my brushes out of the stream studio every time I leave the stream studio. So this little bit of blue mixed in is just going to create like a little bit of that shadow. And we're just touching, touching, touching the tip of the brush into the deepest parts right where we want them. And if we get somewhere we don't want, that's okay. We can use a second brush to clean it up. That's pretty thin paint. I got pretty thin paint you can see there. And because of the blues and the greens and the browns, it looks like a muddy turquoise. Because we want our little lizard friend here to look muddy. I'm just going to focus right on the underside. <clears throat> I, 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 I redacted what I said, uh, Edinger. I apologized. I was in the zone. Oh, and then his goat eyes, yeah. Summer, you just got tossed right under a bus. I did. Dang. Dang. Dangar. Dangar is the best! Uh, what game is this manager for? This is for Shatterpoint. Star Wars Shatterpoint. This is for the No Disintegrations uh, character pack. Um, they're like a bunch of, it's all of our fun bounty hunters and they're not a squad. You take them like uh, individuals into your, uh, into your force. I feel like I did something wrong because I got a will chick lurking in the shadows in the other room. I know. Just turkey lurkey. It's, it's, yeah, you're taking your little break. You got a busy day. We flippy flop. We flippy flop all day long. You got to deal with Shik, then you got to deal with me. No escape. No, there's no escape from us. Just a little disintegration, they ask. Oh, and I don't have cards in this stream at all. They don't give me those. I'm not, I'm not to be trusted with rules. I know. We have digital files, nothing is branched. My my office is like stuff so far out and then Chick's office is like stuff that's like real far out but words. Now we're gonna do a little orange over that yellow. Just to orange that up just a little bit. And we could put a little teal in there too. You want someone disintegrated, get me integrated. That's Dengar's motto. Is that canon? Because I hope it is. I'm just gonna use it every time. Get me integrated. Put me in, coach. I'm Dengar. So I'm going to show how to put a little turquoise in the yellow. I love the, I love the look of a little turquoise in yellow. It's, we're getting a little color theory-ish here. So if anybody understands that color theory, um, spit it out. I'd, I'd love to hear uh, people talk about that. 
See now that's just starting to brighten it up. I'm gonna dig up our boy holder blue here. Oh, I use watercolor brushes. I use several different types of natural hair sable watercolor brushes. Is my lab under my shirt? No, it's on my it's on my lapel, where it belongs. Somebody's asking about um, I'm muffled. Maybe it's just my soft tones. Well, it's probably my brush in my mouth. I also have a brush in my mouth. I know his teeth aren't red, but it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna lay a little red on there. Clip the lab to the brush. I need to hear how you're applying the paint. <laughs> it's probably the brush. I do have a second brush in my mouth. I paint with a second brush in my mouth. I've always painted with a second brush in my mouth. It's my cleanup brush. It's my second brush. Uh, all the VODs will be up in like, what, a few hours probably or something? Oh, Tomorrow? Give us a week, friend. Give us a week, friend. Oh, no. A week? Summer oh, demands a week. Last year. Well, this is not last year. Oh. This is me extravaganza stuff. Don't you have a panel to prep for? Nope. I got lunch to prep for. I'm here the whole time. I'm excited to know what we're doing for lunch. Fried chicken. What? Oh man! ASMR main paint, clean the brush, mixing paint. Oh, do y'all want to hear the hair? Hang on. Hang on. That's what they came for. So we got a little turquoise mixed with a little orange. I don't really like that. That's uh, that's not quite. You definitely want to see me paint with a GoPro on the brush. A go? Oh, a tiny GoPro on yeah. the brush? Yeah. Like like right here? Yeah, so when you do like little eyeballs, you get like one of those medical endoscopy kind of like shots. Yeah. Uh, who do we get on this? Uh, I mean, I'd say Summer, but she's just going to give a rip about it, so not Summer. Summer Sash. Never once. We can only hear half the combo. Yeah, that's, I think we're hiding the rest of the combo. And we just do like this little turquoisey teal. Just punches the shadows. It goes against the warm, right? So the turquoise is a cool. You have this nice warmness to the yellows and oranges. So it just creates like a nice little contrast. It just breaks that and pushes it in the eye. Look at my terrible brush. I do this every week. I'm like, I'm gonna get a new brush and then I never get a new brush. Fried chicken, I'm so excited for lunch. Hey, hey. Uh, let's do a little dark umber and just darken those up one more time. This will be dark umber and our turquoise color. And then we'll start highlighting the yellow. Are we spending too much time on boss? 
I don't think we could do all four in an hour. I don't know who thought that that was achievable by me. Rude. Not bad for, well, how long have we been on him? About 30 minutes? Okay. We're just gonna pick out a couple of the dark lines. This is just the dark umber and the turquoise mix. Just to get the idea of what we're doing, and then we'll go through and we'll highlight the yellow real quick. Now, for a studio miniature, there's different philosophies for if you're painting a studio miniature versus like a tabletop miniature. And then the same goes for like if you're painting a competition miniature and a studio miniature or a tabletop miniature. And you know, this is definitely for tabletop. Um, this is, this miniature, uh, Destiny is to play, oh, new brushes. You know they're gonna set here. I know, but it's five seconds. I have 90 minutes to paint four miniatures. You promised everybody I was going to paint them all? I just said you were going to show them all. Oh, okay. That's fair. I'll switch them out. I'm going to switch them out. I have to switch them out because I really should. Okay, what were we talking about? Oh, tabletop. Tabletop, tabletop. This is for tabletop. And so when we paint for a studio, we like to show off the whole miniature all the way around. And for tabletop, I like a little deep shadow and like a little softness on the back. It, it doesn't, it's, it's, it's fine. All right, let's go a little brighter. I'm gonna start highlighting. Oh, I, mean, I think I'm missing a bunch of questions. Uh, I have issues with my brushes not holding shape. Any tips on how to make them last longer? Um, definitely clean them after every session. Um, you don't have to soap them. Um, store, make sure you do not dip them into the, the paint into the ferrule. The ferrule is the metal bit. If you get paint in there, it's gone. Like it's just, it's just, it, you've ruined the brush already. Um, one dip into the ferrule is, is a ruined brush. And it's just, it's just going to progressively get worse, worse, worse. So, um, I like dropper bottles or if I'm using uh, paints without, if you're using paints without a dropper bottle, use a special brush, just what I call the paint digger. And you just dig out the paint with the special brush that's an old janky brush and just scoop it out and just plop it out on a palette, dry palette, wet palette, doesn't matter, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, if you're using a, a dropper bottle, just drop it out. Do not dip it into the ferrule. Rinse, rinse, rinse after everything. Um, and then just do like weekly uh, brush maintenance with a little brush soap. I do like brushes with big, big bellies um, a whole lot. The belly of the brush is the wide part of the brush. Um, I like brushes with big bellies and small tips. I'm gonna start highlighting with pure yellow. I feel like this would be a little orange, right? If we can glaze a little orange one later. I'm just picking where the highlights are. I have a very sketchy way I approach it. Mm -hmm. 
So this is a little bit of khaki and a little bit of transparent yellow. Transparent yellow uh, came out a little thick out of the ball and I'm using that to my advantage here. Um, I prefer very thick paints, um, like the Monument stuff, um, because I can always thin my paint down, but I can't thick my paint up. Um, somebody's gonna be like, actually, there is a way. Yes, there is a way, but it's not super convenient or quick. Whereas like thinning paint, super convenient thick because you got water next to you. Just little highlights. Little dots and scritches. I want to feel textury. How's that look? That's not bad. Boo, 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 boo. Okay, well, Chick brought me breakfast and to show that I appreciate him, I'm going to switch brushes. I'm doing it. Brand new number one, ready to take the paint. And here we go. Watch it split immediately. That's how it works. Boba Fett, coming at you live, ready to survive, coming at you live, Boba Fett. Hey. All right, I got bold titanium white. I got bright neutral gray. I got warm gray. I'm going to need that. There's a blue color I really, really, really want for this. Faded ultra, no, not faded ultra green. Oh, there it is. White blue. I love that color. Um, I need something a little bit darker. Dark neutral gray sounds great. Dark warm gray sounds great. We'll use those. That's probably enough of the different. Let's put, let's grab a little olive flesh. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun. We're just having a wacky time. I have a horrible time working up the get up and go to paint terrain. Do you have any pointers, tips, tricks, workarounds to get your head wrapped around the process? Um, the very first thing, Jimmy, um, the very first thing is a philosophically, right, from, from the AMG studio, um, um, we believe that terrain is just another character in the game, right? It, it's part of the character and the personality of the game. It's also the part of miniatures games that make miniatures games unique, right? It just, it just, it's just what makes it so different. You know, very few things have, very few games and hobbies have that. I can create this little world that we can all participate in. Um, and I think that that's a very key, fundamental, philosophical place to get your mind at when you're thinking about miniature games and getting ready to paint the terrain. The second part of it is, I think, you know, I'm gonna use a little gray blue too because I love that color. Um, I think, I think a lot of folk overthink terrain and we're going to paint some terrain this weekend um and i'm i'm not and this is how i paint my train this is not necessarily how the studio paints train but it's how i paint my train um i want my train to look good i want it to look sharp and poppy but i also I'm much like you i wanted to get it done I, I i need to tell the story and the beauty of the of the scenario and i need to be a part of character but it is big and bulky and you know and you can get some really amazing results with very minimal effort, right? And I think that that's the big thing is just philosophically changing that approach where like, you know, something like Boba Fett, you're gonna go dark, light, dark, 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 light, 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 dark, 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 dark across these panels. And something like a building, like say for Shadowpoint, I go one tone and the edges are highlighted and maybe a little shadow at the bottom or in between segments, but it's, there's not, it's not over, overblown shadowing like if you look at a wall, you go outside right now. Go outside right now, look at a wall, 
in 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 space, right? It's not a dramatic shadow top to bottom, unless it is. I understand that, but if you're just in bright light, you just have pretty much one tone, and then you have like all the stun, all the all the the the, the grungy um, uh, colors that are just sort of hidden on there. So that's what I like to focus on on terrain is like a flat local color and then some like tonality staining and then some like little texture sponge painting terrain is super super great i love sponge painting my terrain as well um so it's just it's just philosophical get in there get some stuff done and have fun with it so we're going to do prototype boba So I want to start with this like uh, light blue. Mix with some of the whites. There's a little yellow on my brush, so it's tinting everything, and that's okay. I don't care. So this is like medium gray and that uh, gray blue. Yeah, we're gonna paint some terrain this weekend. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time. So be ready to watch those. I do like I said. I think terrain is such a it's such an important part of miniatures games. Just philosophically. You know, board games have boards, card games have, you know, game mat or card mats. Um, you know, chess has a board, Go has a board. Go is my favorite board game. Um, and um, it's what it's such a unique part of miniature gaming that we get to build these little worlds that the miniatures live in and and we get to tell that story with our opponent it's such a cool opportunity that we as miniature hobbyists get to participate in that you know not everybody else gets to I think that's so cool. How, oh, how similar does this miniature look to the Star Wars Legion boat? They're, they're quite different actually. Um, it's the same action-ish, but there is a lot of nuance to action. And, you know, I think nuance is important. Um, you know, really the different poses a human body can do is not super varied. You know, right arm up, right arm down, both arms up, both arms down, leg up, leg down, both legs up, both legs down, body turned to the left, body turned to the right. Everything else is just, it's just subtlety off those. Um, so I think it's very important, like when you look at a measure, look at Look at the overall action. Look at, at the look at the overall uh, nuance that is being portrayed. So then, for the I think for the under suit, we're gonna go warm. So the armor is gonna be cool. The under suit is gonna be warm. A little warm gray, a little light gray. Will we ever see Gungans in Shatterpoint? You never know. Um, you know. 
we've always said like on a long enough timeline, the answer is always yes um, for seeing stuff. But. Everything, everything is somebody's favorite thing. And yucking people's yum is no fun. So, you know, you just never know. I can never say yes. against that cool white armor pieces. That's going to let them stand apart from each other a little bit. Contrast, contrast, contrast. Oh, great question. Are the Meiji pants dream prints or the retail versions? These are retail versions. These are hard plastic. These are exactly what you're going to get. Wasn't expecting tear from below, cool see deep cuts. We're all about deep cuts. We're all about deep cuts. We love deep cuts. We love aqua droids. I don't think there was a single person that wasn't excited about Rift Hands in the studio. A little sticky sticky. Okay, let's start shading. Yep, that's exactly what Kit Fisto is doing. How many times do you find yourself paint oh painting a miniature? Like is this your first time painting Bower like a thousand? Uh <laughs> uh I, they're uh yeah, Envy's Nest is si Simone, like yeah, Envy's Nest would be great. Um, um what, what oh what, oh how many times? It depends on the miniature. There's definitely some miniatures I have painted. Or we have painted in the studio, like individuals have painted in the studio numerous times. Just numerous times. Um, I definitely have a few that is like, um, I painted probably in the hundreds. Um, well, maybe not hundreds, that might be a little hyperbolic, but definitely Definitely, definitely, definitely like 50, 60 times. I think I've painted Boba. Cause like sometimes I'll even do like a, like, um, like a test paint of something. Like after we, after we kind of get sculpted, I'll do like a little short test paint. Just to sort of see how it's gonna turn out, or like how 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 is the painting experience? Um, is there any thing that we need to like amp up detail wise? Should we you know accentuate maybe a line somewhere, or how is it? Or more importantly, like how is the face gonna look when when? when I get, when we get this painted, like it's, it's, you know, it's one thing to see it 
um, you know, a, um, a prototype and you're pretty sure you know what it looks like, but it's another thing to actually get paint on. So like sometimes we definitely do that, but there are definitely some inches that just have been painted multiple times. Even from my own personal collection, I have, there's characters that I've painted. And I mean, I have two Grievouses for Shatterpoint that I've painted myself for myself. With Boba and other Mandos, is there a different painting approach to clothing compared to the armor? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so for cloth, I tend to go um, tighter shadows and highlights um, and everything a little sharper. Um, and for cloth, you want a little broader shadow and highlight, maybe even less highlight overall because you want to feel soft so that's uh that's painting with texture it's a super important um, philosophy when it comes to paint miniature um and you know it's something that you can learn to do is painting with different textures i know brendan did a class for us at depticon about textures um this past year at Adepticon. Um, we talk about it here a lot as well. And there's a lot of really great painters out there that you can uh, take a look at and learn about the different ways to approach texture. Um, super important, um, you know, if you want to learn it, uh, how to do texture, so. Oh, surprise support for GT. Uh, yeah, we did. A, we actually did that. We actually did that. We actually had a miniature painted up for um, for one of our events, and you know, it, maybe it's something we look into uh, more of. Who knows? But but we we uh, we gave that a go. <laughs> Simone's making shake work now. You see that? I tried this whole thing putting uh, scale 75 instance over metallic for my main armor. It's not really worked out. There is, um, you know what? Let's do, let's let's explore that. We have less, just under 30 minutes left. Let's do some metallic base coats with us uh, with uh, with um, glazes over the top. Let me throw a little more highlight on Boba. that she's got a long way to go but that's okay we're not in a hurry today Mm, 
Alright, let's try some metals and glazes. And that just means we're going back to Dengar! Mummy! Mummy! I need silver. Let's find silver. Boop -a -doop, boop -boop -a -doop. Transparent brown as well. Boop -a -doop -a -doop, boom -boom. Do I ever paint a studio miniature? Where'd I go? And wish I could take it home for myself. Um, oh, if I painted studio miniatures, probably. I don't do that anymore. Um, we have some amazing painters that work for us. Um, Brendan, um, um, Elizabeth Peckley, and Lovejoy, Oscar Lars. Um, just do a bunch of really uh, fantastic paint jobs for us. I don't really get to do that much. Um, but, actual answer, yes. There are definitely times where you paint up a studio miniature. Because um, in the past, I, I, I did do that. Um, where's the silver? Am I crazy? Summer, did you take my silver paint? Summer. <gasps> Shirk! I literally can't find the silver paint. And I thought it was just here from the last stream. Oh boy. We should get a paint rack. There's dark silver. That's not going to work. White gold. Let's do white gold. I'd rather have silver though. I'm going to look for one more second. Been more than one second. Boy, oh boy. Man, I really thought I just had that out, too. I see bronze, dark neutral gray. None of those. That's white. <gasps> I found it! Shadow Minx, you helped. You guided me right to it. Okay, let's do a little silver. Hey, yeah. Well, silver. Dark silver. Coming to save the day against his enemy, Light Silver. <laughs> no, what else? I was dark so safe. Ellen and I were on the same. We were on the same page. Dark Silver, mortal enemy of Light Silver. There's only room for one silver in this town. Okay, we're gonna just coat this armor plate and this armor plate in silver. I'd like to report in that I got over my gear fear of painting Lord Maul, and I think he became one of my favorite miniatures I've ever done. That's awesome! The tattoos are a challenge. That's, you know, just part of his design. Um, you know, we try to make it easy as possible for anyone to paint those. Uh, you know, that's one where, where we were talking earlier, right? You know, I think I painted, I think I painted Maul's face probably 12 times. Um, where you know where where you 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 get the sculpt and you prototype it and and you paint the face and then you make adjustments based on how that painting went um and that's super it's super helpful so like we've i i have definitely painted maul's face 
probably 12, 15 times, uh, trying to work out how best to approach the painting, uh, how to best approach the sculpting for the painting, right? Um, you know, and sometimes, sometimes in your mind, we're going to do something else while the silver dries. Um, sometimes in your mind, you're like, oh, we definitely want to make this raised, or oh, we definitely want to make this um, inset. And then you get the miniature, and you're like, okay, well, we need to do the opposite of what we thought. We were totally wrong. Um, so it's, you know, that's just part of it. Um, you know, every little miniature is a little puzzle for us to figure out. And sometimes something that worked on one does not work on another. Um, and so we're, all, we're constantly working and um, figuring out how best to approach different things, um, which is part of the fun of it, honestly. I love puzzles, um, love puzzle games. And so um, build, making mentors is literally just just a puzzle game. Sabine's helmet had insets and raised areas. Yeah, and I, I believe, if I remember correctly, Sabine's helmet is a mix, right? It's it's some raised, some inset. It's not all one. Um, so it's, it's just... Working through the puzzle, figuring out the best approach, and always being um, being ready to be surprised because you know sometimes the manager just will give you um, you know give you a surprise that you weren't ready for, which is super exciting. I love that so much. This Dengar looks like he uh, looks made to be stood in a hangar waiting for his payment, having just stepped out of the punishing one. Yes! Yeah. He's just waiting for it. He's just, he's just, he's just standing there, right? He's just like, somebody's like, um, his client's like, we'll get your credits ready. And then they walk away, and Dengar's like, mm, are they getting my credits ready? Like, he feels like it's a trap. They're like, we're not going to pay this fool. Ha, ha, ha. And Dengar's like, you underestimate me. And it's good to be underestimated. And Dengar's like, ready to tussle. And he's just like, this is what happens when you mess with Dengar. And he's like, gas bomb, ow. You can paint your measuring tools. Modify means make adjustments in the sizes. So now we're going to use a little transparent brown and a little bit of that glaze wash medium just to give it a little, little bite. Yeah, please have my credits ready. This monkey is annoying. What does Dengar sound like? Oh, see, me and you have a different, like, we have a different, I feel like he's just chatty. Oh, yeah. I love that story, too. Like, he's, like, all stoic. He's just like, I got nothing to say because you're not worth my time. And whereas, like, me, I'm like, he goes on, like, a, he's, like, on a mission with Boss. And Boss is like, it's time to be quiet. We got to sneak up on the quarry. And then guy's like, did I ever tell you about this time I went to, you know, Yavin? And, and Boss was like, dude, sh you know, shush, we're, out, we're on a mission. And then I was like, yeah, yeah. And he like crunches an apple. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he's really good at his job. But he's just real chatty. Yeah. He's just... yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's chatty Dengar. Guys, guys, guys. They're like, oh, Dengar's coming. 
oh man, you guys almost left without me. That's what they were trying to do, right? It's just like, oh. Yeah, yes, he was in Clone Wars a little bit. But I like telling my stories. That's the other fun part about miniature games. I get to be part of the story. We get to tell our little we get to tell our little stories on the tabletop. You get to make your little world with your terrain and then you get to come over I get to go to your house and be like, I painted up all this train. And you're like, oh my gosh, look at that. What world is this? I'm like, I don't know. And it's like, I'm like, let me see your miniatures. And you're like, I painted them like this. And like, look at their lava bases. I'm like, what? They're all on lava bases. That's rad. And I'm like, look at my miniatures. And you're like, they're all like on snow bases. And then we put it on a table and it's like, it doesn't matter. But we're just telling our little story. And then my guy jumps on a roof and you're like, I can't believe he jumped on the roof. And I'm like, what is, what is she going to do? And you're like, she's going to bust your face and take your creds. And I'm like, oh, no. And then the dice roll. And I'm like, ha, 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 ha. Your dice failed you again, fool. You weren't ready for my power of Dengar. I like that you're making too much sound with your apple crunches. See, we're at the end of the 90-minute stream, and now I'm, now I'm, I'm being wild. We're gonna put a little blue in that um, brown, transparent brown. Mm, that's not quite dry yet. We need to let that dry more. Let's work on his face just a little bit while we wait for paint to dry. We still got, what, 10 minutes or so? Oh, you got a sign for me? Hey, you got a sign for me. Oh, I just stuck my hand in paint. Womp womp. That happens sometimes. You gotta put a little green in his skin. That is not the right color. I need a little bit darker. So let me find some green. I'm gonna find new green. We're just waiting for that other. We're just waiting for that glaze to dry. Paint with my beard. Oh, there's the color right there, Summer. Do you see that? Ooh, that's the one I want. This is a little green and red mixed together. Look at his grumpy little face. Oh, I love it so much. There's lot, there's no OB-1 587, there's, there's, there's no wrong way to hobby. As long as you're hobbying and having fun, you're doing it right, right? It's for you. It's your relaxed time. It's your downtime. Um, you know, we like, we like streaming and, you know, teaching people if they want to learn something new or just hang out. But the reality is, is like, if, it, if you paint the way you want to paint and you're having fun, you are doing it correct. <clears throat> oh, 
you know, because everybody's got different lives and, you know, how much free time they have and you have to spend it the way you want to spend it. And I think that's super important. Um, you know, not everybody's going to paint to like a competition level. Not everybody's going to paint to like a studio level. That's perfectly okay and acceptable. The favorite, my favorite miniature I've ever seen painted is the one you just finished. So as long as you're painting and you're finishing it and you're having fun, it's my favorite miniature. I think that's dry. I hope that's dry because we want to we want to use this wonderful brown and blue mix for some more shadow. And then build up some nice shadow. And I'm gonna play it. This is just a glaze. It's super thin over silver. Wonderful, wonderful way to get some great results. We definitely use this um, in the studio. I use this a lot. A lot of times I don't even paint gold. Um, I, I use silver and then I use yellows. Uh, I use like a glaze of yellow and then like a glaze of flesh wash. Um, the reason I, I use like a glaze of flesh wash for gold is because it's got that warm warmth to it. And um, that's how just, that's just how I paint gold sometimes. Very quick and easy. Uh, we want a little more orange in this. So I use some orange transparent, some brown transparent, and a little silver. A more brown transparent. A little bit of our glaze. Oh, that's a lovely color. Greg Webster, my man. And then glaze over the highlight areas and blend it into that mid tone just a little bit. That's when I started pushing it to that grungy, especially with that blue undertone. Delicious, delicious, delicious. That is starting to turn into that grungy bronze armor. The bronze has that bluish green in the in the shadows, and then that warm orangeiness in the in the upper uh, highlighted areas. Really, it's about like a couple of different layers. Somebody asked about this process. I hope this is helping. Because I really, I really like that. I didn't actually use those colors like that before, but that, oh, I see the sign. I'm not going to paint stink line somehow. I mean, you could give an indication of that. Um, we only have five minutes and then we're going to have to end this stream and get ready for um, the next stream. Summer, do we know what time and what the next stream is so we can let everybody know? Yeah, I told you. So the next stream is at 1.30 and that was 90 minutes long. Warcable and Battle Warcable. Oh, Legion. Oh. Okay, everybody in this chat right now, you need to go tell everybody to get ready for 1.30 oh, Legion yeah. Battle Orders. Oh, yeah. They do not want to If you're missing that, Letisk, Letisk. Oh, Lathering on it. Yeah, comp okay, so Compel, you're the one that asked. Uh, yeah. Uh, slathering it rarely works. There's are there are times. Um, I I used to use a paint technique called paint smash. Um, great for base coating, um, but um, really I think for this to really read, um, 
you want a little more precision and glaziness uh, and sort of build up a few um, colors, right? Don't go for a single application. You, you need to, you, most colors um, that you're trying to work with, with that philosoph philosophy that you're talking about, um, they need like a second color underneath at least to read out as a full blown color. Um, and so just a big slather on. Um, they just look too monotone and uh, not very dynamic. So that's why we added that like a little bit of blue to the shadows, we added a little bit of orange. If you, if you watch movies and you've seen movie posters in the past 30 years, 20 years, uh, blue and orange, right? That's the jam, blue and orange. So we did the exact same thing here. We just took movie poster philosophy of pop. We put the blue in the shadows. We put a little orange in the top over silver, pulled it all together. We'll highlight with some pure silver and he'll be good. Uh, we only got a few minutes left. Stinky lines. So we're not going to do stinky lines. Although I love that idea. But I think what we can do, because I don't want his head wraps to look gross. But I think we can make them look gross. So I think the secret here is a little red. So I'm going to take a little bit of this um, red oxide from Monument, from the Adepticon set. And we're going to use some of our glaze medium. I don't want to overdo this. I'll just give it a little bit of red stain on the wraps and I'm keeping it super subtle here you know nothing about Dengar oh let me tell you he's canonically stinky he's got grenades I think that little bit of that redness there um, just adds to like that that story. Like maybe that head wrap is a little grungier than it should be, right? Without overdoing it. Or being super gross. And then we can also take a little bit of that red and glaze medium. And I'm gonna put it around these little scars. bit around the lips and the eye sockets. Oh yeah. That's our boy. That's our boy Dengar. There we go. So we've done Dengar, a little bit of Dengar, some Bosque. Look at him, he's so mad. We did prototype boba. And poor IG. We didn't we didn't get we didn't make it to IG. We didn't make it to IG. So, you know. It, it happens. It happens. Alright, so we're gonna take a little break. We'll be back at 1.30 for the Legion uh, panel, continuing day one of Mini Stravaganza. So join us there. Be fun. See you later. Oh, I, I've really messed up my outro. Bye. I'm just going to stay in here awkwardly. Bye. See you.